The purpose of this assignment is to show a group of people standing together in an elevator or a small space. I know that's not really the social distancing that we're doing in the real world, but for a drawing assignment, it's kind of fun because you have to overlap the people and make some of them stand in the front of the elevator and push some of them back a little bit further in the elevator. You can see on my example that the tall guy is way in the back. Now you're going to want to use a regular size sheet of paper, an eight and a half by 11. My paper was a lot larger than that, so that's why I traced around a regular sheet of eight and a half by 11 to begin with. What I'm doing right now is I'm drawing the ceiling and the two sides of the elevator. The ceiling comes down an inch and the sides come in two inches. I didn't have a ruler with me, so I just kind of eyeballed that up and basically thought of the top as being one unit and both of the sides being two units. If you read the instructions, it says to don't not to draw the bottom back line of the elevator until after the people are drawn. That's because you don't want a line going across their legs. It kind of ruins the illusion of perspective. So right now I'm drawing a line from the back wall to the front wall and kind of creating the area where the side wall meets the ceiling. Again, there's the side wall meeting the ceiling. Get rid of that other little line. And hopefully you can kind of see how you're creating that illusion of depth right now. At this point in the assignment, you're going to give some thought as to who your four people are that are going to be put into the elevator. Before I start drawing the people, I want to kind of figure out where the floor of the elevator is going to be. I'm bringing that up at a sharper angle than I did the ceiling so that I have more surface area of the floor to draw on. I decided to draw the four characters from The Wizard of Oz. You try to be as creative as you can be to get the four people that are going to be in your elevator. I started my drawing with the Tin Man. One thing I wish I would have done differently is to put him in the back of the elevator. He's such a tall character that I think he would have worked better back there. I'm going to draw Dorothy next and put her in the front of the elevator because she's short and one of the taller characters can go behind her. I kind of wish I would have put the Tin Man further back. Oh well, it'll work out. I'm going to see if I can put Dorothy's hand around the Tin Man's arm so it looks like they're kind of doing their little shuffle down the yellow brick road. When you're sketching your people, make sure you use really light lines be until you want to commit to the actual place where you put the line. Also, I like to build my characters from the feet up. Sometimes I go from the feet and then to the head and kind of make the body meet in the middle. But you definitely want to make sure that those feet are firmly planted on the elevator floor. You can see that it takes a lot of patience and detail work to get the characters drawn. I'm looking back and forth at my drawing and the picture of Dorothy that I'm going off of and putting in some of the details like the bows in her hair right now, the partner hair a little bit earlier, um, the shoes. Um, just take your time and work your way through it. And hopefully seeing this kind of gives you um, the idea that it does take some time. I'm not real happy with how skinny Dorothy is, um, so I kind of widen her out there a little bit. And I wasn't really sure what to do with her other arm, so I kind of just draw the sleeve in and leave it there for now. And eventually, I add a basket to it. Now I need to decide where I'm going to put the lion. And I need to put him on the back side of the elevator, which is why I just drew that, that circle. That's where his feet are going to be. 
and I'm indicating where his body is going to go. He's going to be really tall and fill in that whole back corner. So that's what this next section is going to be. Can you see how the lion is kind of um, over the top of the back corner of the elevator? I did that on purpose to make him look like he was actually standing in the elevator. A common mistake kids will make is they will just line them up on the wall. Um, you don't want this to look like a police lineup. You want them to look like they're crowded around in the elevator and all have their own special spot to stand in. Now I want to make sure I know where the back of the elevator is, so that's why I'm putting these lines in here. And I've got that middle space back right where I'm drawing now for the scarecrow. And I'm going to fast forward here a little bit and cut some of my drawing out. So you can see that I finished my drawing. I got the scarecrow back there and I have a sign in the elevator. The sign always adds kind of a little bit of fun. My sign says this way to Oz. And I wanted to use a black Sharpie to outline all of the lines. I purposefully drew, drew very lightly. And now I'm going back and I'm committing to the lines that I really wanted. Unfortunately, my pen didn't work and you can see in just a little bit that I stop and I try something else. Oh right there I'm erasing the side the back side of the elevator because the lion is covering that up he's overlapping. Now here I'm showing you where the back line of the floor of the elevator is. Don't make the mistake of drawing that in too soon or it's going to look like you have lines going through your character's legs. So you can see that I had to skip over Dorothy's dress, I had to skip over the legs of the lion, I had to skip over the legs of the tin man, um, and you only see a very small portion of that back floor where the back wall and the floor meet each other. So I cut out a section where I was just using the ink pen and finally I just got tired of doing it. It was too hard to draw over those graphite lines. So I got, went back to my pencil and I'm just really drawing dark now. I would never draw with my pencil this, this darkly or this intently um, if I hadn't gone over those lines and and really figured out where I wanted my lines in a very light manner first. So now I'm going back to the elevator walls. That line is the back corner, so is that one of the elevator, and I'm darkening those in, and then I didn't have a ruler at home, so I just took a envelope that happened to be on the table, and I used that as a straight edge, and the lines that are really close to the back wall are close together and they get a little further apart as they come forward and that will give you the illusion of perspective. So you can see that I'm coming a little bit further away. Oh, forgot the insides of his tail. A little bit further away and I'm keeping those lines parallel to each other as much as I can and that kind of gives you the illusion that it's going back. Sorry about my hair in the way. <laughs> Finally, I'm ready to add color. So I looked at my phone to see the color of the lion. I'm putting kind of an orange tone on his face and then I'll use yellows and browns for the rest of him. Um, again, this isn't really what I would have used for um, adding color. I, I wish that I had just regular colored pencils. These are actually watercolor pencils and um, if I had a different paper I would have maybe liked using them but for the paper that I was using it really wasn't the best but I just made do with what I had. You could also use crayons 
colored pencil would have been perfect. Um, if you don't have anything with color at home, you could just use your pencil to shade. Later on in the video, I just use my graphite pencil for the Tin Man because he's gray. Um, so don't worry about what you're going to use to add color to it. Um, and if you have something that you can figure out, great. I think I thought that the lion looked a little monotone. So I came back in with a black and I'm starting to add kind of some shadows and some detail around some of the areas, areas just to make them pop a little bit more. Next, I'm going to go on to the scarecrow. And again, I checked a picture of the scarecrow so that I was using the right colors. Put the green in the hat. And again, I put some, some darker areas of the green around the back of the hat just to give it a little bit more depth. I edited out some of the coloring of the scarecrow because it was kind of boring, but um, now you can see that I finished him up and I'm getting ready to move on to the next thing. And the next thing is Dorothy. So she wears a blue dress. It's kind of a gingham print. That's what I'm zooming up for. And I'm going to try to do some lines going sideways and eventually I go horizontal, trying to get that checker pattern that Dorothy has in it. So pay attention not only to just flat colors, but also to textures of what's going on in the characters that you decide to put into the elevator. When it came time to color in the Tin Man, I really wasn't sure what color to use. The black would have been way too dark, and I eventually decided I'd just use my pencil because that's gray and it looked kind of silvery like his um, tin suit did. I also then added a little bit of blue colored pencil over the top of that. And then I went back in and I gave him some red cheeks just to, again, break up that monotone that I sort of had going on with the lion also. Now that I'm done with the four characters that are in the elevator, I'm going to work on the elevator itself. Make sure you put a sign on the back of the wall of the elevator it just kind of adds to the to the humor and kind of makes it a little bit more delightful and then I'm going to do the back wall and I'm going to kind of give it a texture I'm not going to color that in solid I want it to stand out from the characters so the the texturized background gives it a different look as well as a different color than the characters and then I'm going to follow through with that on the ceiling and the sides and I'm going to make it a little bit darker further back and again I'm going for kind of a textured look to give it a different look than the characters. <laughs> 